Okay, so good morning, everybody. In fact, in the pan, good evening. And my name is Andrzej Tukowski. I am chair of this defense. So let me first um, introduce the reviewer, supervisor, and also candidate. And the next, we ask the candidate to, to present them uh, his achievement and his results. So, okay, let's start from introduction myself. As I said, my name is Cichocki. I come originally from Poland, educated uh, in, in Poland and in Germany. I finished uh, the largest university in Poland, the Warsaw Technical uh, University. And after my PhD, I obtained, I, I study in Germany. I obtained the prestigious Alexander for Humboldt Fellowship. Uh, and after this, I have several DFG, Deutsche Volksgemeinschaft uh, grants in Germany. Uh, I in, was professor in, in University of Poland, and after this, I obtained the, the position in Japan, Riken Brain Science Institute, and I was the head of the of advanced brain signal processing there. Uh, now I'm, I am here in Scaltech and I am the head of laboratory of uh, deep learning and tensor network. Uh, okay, so this is about me. So let's uh, allow me to introduce the eminent, our uh, foreign expert. So let's start me from Professor Konstantin Kondak. He, he has uh, both PhD and Doctor of Science in German is called Habilitierung. So he is from Institute of Robotics and Mechatronics from G German Aerospace Center. So um, Konstantin received his diploma in computer science and his doctoral and postdoctoral degree from Technische Universität Berlin uh, from 2000. To 2009, he holds position as uh, of the representation of full professor at the real time system and robotics group, also at Technische Universität Berlin. Uh, he, she was the head of laboratory at Access Skeleton Robots and also head of laboratory of the Namor Flying Robot. Since 2009, he's the head of key research. Area flying robots at DLR, I mean uh, German Aerospace Center. So in German Centrum für Luft and Raumfahrt, or German National Center for Aerospace Energy and Transportation Research. His current research interest is focused on simulation and control of multi body system, as well on description and verification of complex technical system and their missions. Okay, so the second um, eminent reviewer is uh, Professor Hiroyuki Hachimoto. Uh, Hachimoto Sensei is from Department of Informatics University in Electron Communication, Chopu, Japan. So um, Professor Hachimoto received PhD degree in information science and technology at the state and the University of Tokyo in 2006. As you know, this is the best university in Japan. In 2001, she was a research fellow in GSPS. GSPS means Japan Society for Promotion of Science. From 2003 to 2006, she worked as research associate in famous laboratory Tachi Kawakami Lab, University of Tokyo. She is currently professor at the Department of Informatics, University of Electrocommunication, Chopu, Japan. His research expertise and interest is also very wide, include high display, tactical sensor, electrical nerve simulation, human computer interactions, welfare device, and virtual reality. Okay. So let's allow me to introduce my colleague who worked 
uh, with me in the same department from Dr. Gonzalo Ferrer. She is assistant professor in the Center of Computation and Data Intensive, Intensive Science and Engineering here in Skolkovo Institute of Science and Technology, so uh, briefly Skoltech. So Gonzalo completed his PhD thesis in 2015, uh, and his thesis was devoted to robot navigation uh, in urban environment. And he was, uh, he defended his PhD in uh, Universita Politecnica Catalonia, UPC, in Barcelona. Spain. Uh, his, uh, his work was awarded by George Giral uh, Foundation Award, the European Award in Robotics. She worked uh, in US in the uh, University of Michigan in the Department of Computer Science as a research fellow and postdoc. Uh, in 2018, he joined his Caltech as assistant professor, and he is leading uh, laboratory of mobile robotics. This laboratory is focused on research, on planning, perception, and how to combine both the both approaches into solution in robotics. He has collaborated on international research projects and industrial research initiative. Um, for example, Urus project on human robot corporation in urban area and NGV project in alias with the Ford Motor Corporation on most uh, Let me introduce now the uh, Dr. Andrei Somov, who is assistant professor in the same center. So Andrei graduated from the Russian State Aviation Technological University. Uh, in the Department of Electronic Engineering in 2006. He received PhD also in Electronic Engineering in 2009 from the University of Trento, Italy, having specialized uh, mostly in power manage management in wireless sensor networks. Uh, he also worked as senior researcher in uh, Create Net Research Center Italy, 2010-2015, and as research fellow at University of Exeter UK, 2016-2017. She also joined uh, our university, Caltech, in 2017 as assistant professor. His research interest mm, is related mostly with wireless sensor network, but also internet of things, uh, devices, cognitive internet of things associated with proof of concept implementation. She holds several awards in field of wireless sensor networks and internet of things, including Google, IoT technology research award and test paper award of IE uh, conference 2019. Okay, so let's uh, allow me to introduce now uh, the um, supervisor of our candidate. So Dmitry Chikirukov is associate professor in the um, Department of Space Center, also here in Skoltech. So Dmitry uh, Chiturkov received PhD degree in information science and technology, also from the University of Tokyo, Japan in 2007, the best university in Japan. Uh, from 2007 to 2009, she was uh, GSPS postdoctoral fellow in the same university. She worked also as assistant professor uh, in Toyohashi University of Technology from 2004, and he worked in, in, in laboratory electronics inspired interdisciplinary research. 
she here in Scaltec, she established and she managed the space robotics lab and also wearable media lab. His research interest is very wide, it includes sensor for robots, wearable haptic and tactile interfaces and display humanoid robots, teleexistence, affective haptic, human robotics, interaction, um, uh, human robotic interaction, sorry, virtual and augmented reality, artificial intelligence, and also natural language processing. Uh, Professor Cecchiarupo received uh, several prestigious awards as a best demonstration awards. For example, ACM Associ Association for Computing Machinery Graph as in 2019, also Laval Virtual Awards, SIGGRAPH 2006-15, and Best Paper Award, AC ACM Augmented Human 2000. And okay, lastly, uh, let me allow to, to introduce uh, Grigory Yasin, uh, our PhD candidate. He, he also worked in Space Center in Skolkovo Institute of Science and Technology. So Grigory Yasin received a specialist degree with honors uh, at Bauman Moscow State University, where he studied plasma power system. In 2015, 2016, he studied, first graduate study uh, on master science and uh, in advanced manufacturing and production design here in Skoltek. And uh, she was also partially, she's uh, educated in, in MIT. In 2017, uh, Gregory Yashin joined PhD program in engineering system and Skoltech when he performed the development of the robotics limbs and static human robot interaction to control flying drop in the laboratory of Professor Tukin. So, okay, so um, now we ask candidate to present the nine achievements and results. So you have maximum 40 minutes to present the, the most significant achievement and to formulate problem if you attempt to solve. After this, we ask the viewer to express their opinion and to give you some questions. And so on. So, okay, so please, Grigory, you can start. Thank you, Professor Chikotsky, for presenting me uh, and all members of my jury. Uh, dear committee members and uh, our listeners of this events, uh, I appreciate the time uh, dedicated to my research and uh, participation uh, in uh, my PhD difference. I'm pleased to. Uh, present you my uh, thesis on the topic of development of good flying robots uh, with, uh, with uh, the multifunctional robot links uh, at operation in uh, This is the outline of uh, my presentation. Uh, at the beginning, I will talk about the, my motivation, the existing projects, and solve the uh, problems of the projects, and uh, uh, proposed solutions um, which can be divided into IRVR project. Uh, it is a virtual reality based manipulation system for aerial manipulation and uh, a local gear project, uh, which is dedicated to the development of post motion algorithm for the landing gear of multi rotors. Finally, I will summarize my findings and uh, describe the challenge. Nowadays, unmanned air vehicles are actually developed to perform uh, the underground operation. Uh, implementation of such and risk operations, assistance in emergency situations, industrial inspection, and maintenance. The environment of weather applications uh, contains a lot of uh, various objects uh, with uh, different shape and sizes, uh, which can be allocated in the structure or uh, in a random manner. At the same time, weather objects such as rocks or debris can prevent the usage of uh, usual mobile robots. Thus, we can characterize uh, this environment as hot. 
in this case, it makes sense to uh, equip and the UAVs uh, with uh, one or several multifunctional robotic teams with goal to increase the number of tasks which can be implemented by such one uh, One of the first uh, projects dedicated to the aerial manipulation uh, was about the uh, movement of objects uh, using unmanned helicopter with a grip. Uh, the usage of a helicopter provides a good payload. However, uh, the presence of only one degree of freedom gripper and don't allow to implement a uh, difficult task. And uh, in this case, it can be only object delivery. In 2015, uh, IRA Works and the IRA Arms project were launched in the framework of the European, uh, European program, uh, Horizon 2020, where the projects were dedicated to the idea of collaborative work for uh, flying robots and uh, to develop uh, the uh, robotic systems integrating these multiple arms for industrial inspection and maintenance. On this slide, I highlighted uh, two projects relevant to, more relevant to my studies. Uh, in the first project, Clarence et al. developed the exoskeleton interface uh, to control the long reach manipulator attached to the uh, multi uh, using visual feedback. This method allows to perform a different tasks. However, uh, the exoskeleton is a bulk interface, which can constrain the operator's motion. In the second project, uh, the uh, researchers developed the flying robot with two uh, manipulators, uh, which can uh, perform manipulation tasks uh, in standalone mode. Uh, this method allows to perform uh, various tasks, uh, but the extension of functionality in this way uh, decrease the flight time. Uh, based on my literature review, uh, I can conclude that the current tendency of the development of flying robots uh, is the uh, development robots for the specific task, uh, in which can be uh, uh, performed the question task in standalone mode. Thus, we can formulate the main research question as follows. How to improve uh, the functional efficiency and control method of the UAVs equipped with the multifunctional robotic teams. The current tendency to control to remote control of the robots is the development of uh, visual and verbal interface. Uh, in the first project, uh, the researchers assembled uh, the the researchers assembled the smart glove uh, from the 18 national measurement units. Uh, this interface allows the operator to control the manipulator naturally and intuitively. But at the same time, uh, this interface didn't connect it to any of visual feedback. That makes it impossible to control uh, the robot uh, without a direct visual, uh, visual contact. In our project, uh, the haptic effect is based on the uh, velocity cues from the UAVs and direct forces from the uh, uh, the researchers uh, aimed to improve uh, the perception of the flight control in remote environment. In this case, uh, the usage of um, such type of control devices uh, takes time for the training. Thus, the first qualifying question is uh, how can the operator remote control the aerial manipulator and help to move? My next point is in regard to the development of multifunctional robots. The first robot is a, a hybrid robot uh, with uh, uh, flight hardware directly embedded uh, in the exoskeleton. Uh, this uh, design follows, uh, provides the lightweight of the robot. However, uh, the developers of this robot didn't make the algorithms for the landing. In our project, uh, the researchers Developed combined to the landing uh, gear with the uh, hospital employees. So this goal to be able to perform uh, aerial manipulation tasks and the landing in standalone mode. Uh, however, the presence of only three robot teams uh, didn't provide to, to the robot move up to the land. Thus, the second qualifying question is how can the UAV equip with the robotic limbs? Uh, Names uh, landing gear work without stacking anything. 
uh, summarizing state of the art, I can say that the main problem uh, can be formulated as uh, to develop uh, the most functional robotic system and uh, method to rem uh, effectively remote control uh, this system. To clarify this problem, uh, the two subtasks were formulated. In framework of the first subtask, uh, we can say that it's necessary to design the teleoperation system, uh, which will allow to right, control the robot uh, is coming to perception from the robot state. In frame of the second task, it's necessary to develop the motion algorithm for the landing. In framework of my uh, this, I developed uh, two robots from GIRP and IRVR, which is uh, equipped, which I equipped with the uh, most robot wings and controlled uh, through the uh, special compression system. To solve the subtask, uh, I designed the virtual reality space operation system uh, with variable interface uh, to uh, naturally and intuitively uh, interact with the objects in a remote environment. And finally, uh, uh, the, a no, novel automotion algorithm was developed for the uh, landing gear of future objects. On this slide, I described you know, the user usage uh, scenario of the developed Robot in GIRP and IRVR. It can be necessary to explore the mines on the emission of toxic gas, which can form uh, during after the blasting operations or fall collapse. In other cases, it can be carbon dioxide, methane gas. Initially, uh, the drone gear uh, robot flies into the tunnel, flies into the tunnel, uh, and lands on an interface space near the possible objects. In case of the gas detection, uh, the robot uh, sends commands to the IRVR robot to print the gas analyzer at the specified location. Because the uh, uh, exploration area can be dangerous for hard to reach humans, the operator located in the safe place outside of the map. Now I will talk about uh, my first part of the presentation, uh, the IRVR project. Uh, virtual reality based teleportation system, aerial missions. This is the architecture of this system using a uh, human mounted display and uh, variable interface on your component. The operator sends the desired position of the manipulator and the uh, uh, point to the computer to be used, which is the ground based station. Uh, after that, the computer uh, transmits the data to the onboard computer of the robot. And simultaneously receive data about the actual position of the, of the robot on the motion station. Finally, uh, the computer uh, updates the virtual reality scene in the human mounted display. This video contains three records of the experiments. Uh, the first part is the demonstration of the uh, teleportation system, teleportation control of the robot in special condition. Uh, you can see that the robot follows to the target space of the operator. In the second video, you can see the full screen of the flight experiment, uh, which performed in two rooms. So, and finally, uh, I showed the record of the flight experiment with the obstruction. In the left upper corner, you can see the digital twin of the robot in the room. And in Windows. On this slide, I showed the technical characteristics and 3D model of the robot, which consists of uh, one rotor and a manipulator with four degree of freedom. Uh, the manipulator is assembled from two links and the three servo motors in articulated joints. Also, I used uh, one servo motors uh, to control the roll rotation of the Gripper and uh, one more servo motor to control the opening and closing of the grip. Uh, the gripper is uh, equipped with a compact digital camera and uh, uh, ultrasonic sensor. Also, uh, the manipulator links have a tough structure, which makes construction of the manipulator light and rigid. Uh, the maximum payload of the robot equals uh, 400 days. I used inverse kinematics uh, to calculate the joint angles of the, of the robot, which, is, which are theta, beta, and delta. 
at the design position of the gripper. Also, it was necessary to in your estimate, necessary to estimate the possible limitations, uh, geometrical limitations of the manipulator. You can see the, on the right side of the slide the kinematic diagram of the manipulator. Uh, I should note uh, that the, I imposed the additional restriction on the angle alpha. Fact alpha equals beta minus it. It was necessary to provide the parallel retention of the grip uh, in case of the control by uh, the alpha. Uh, using uh, dynamic factor manipulation, I derived the equations for the entangles and uh, presented on this. Case. So uh, the forward kinematics was used to Play uh, the actual position of the robot in virtual reality scene and to control the variable interface. Uh, so, to calculate the position of the joints, I applied the transformation matrix from the initial coordinate system to the coordinate system of each one. Uh, the next step is uh, the estimation of the thermometer loss. For this goal, I created the dynamic model, which consists of Manipulator components with assignment of the process components, uh, input data presenting as uh, dependence of the joint angle in time, uh, transfer function of the several motors is taking into account the physical characteristics of the several motors. On the right side, I showed the changing of several motors uh, in time. In the initial position and final position, the robot is uh, lowered down uh, from the uh, 38 to 42 seconds, uh, the robot uh, operates, operator operates uh, the position elongated in front of the robot. And uh, directly in this interval, uh, time interval is the volumes of force corresponds to the maximum volumes. And the manipulator's control and control uh, doesn't provide the variety of the operations. Uh, that means uh, it was necessary to apply uh, the operation con operator control. For this goal, I developed three types of instruments. On the left figure, you can see the photo of the operator wearing human mounted display, uh, small buff, and a steel life trackers. Two eye trackers uh, are attached to the hand operator with goal to track the orientation of the shoulder and elbow. Uh, the smart glove is assembled from two flex bending sensors, control the open and closing of the gripper, and the uh, IMU sensor to track the feature orientation of the wrist plate. After a series of experiments, I decided to create uh, the Novin variable interface independent from the uh, base tension, which are necessary for the assistive devices. Thus, you can see on the central figure, uh, the interface, which is assembled from IMU sensor on the shoulder of the operator and two flex bending sensor on the elbow and wrist joints. Uh, the flex sensor provides the precise data reading. However, uh, the quality of, of this reading depends significantly different from the structural, individual structure of uh, operator's hands uh, for each human. Uh, thus, at the same time, a uh, mu sensor provides the reliable if we use the magic field. Uh, therefore, uh, I developed the dot interface, which consists of a mu sensor, which touched to the Shoulder, elbow, and wrist joint. In this record, uh, the, the move based interface was used to compare with the VR controller in the user studies. And uh, the smart glass with the device records was used to uh, during the flight test of the robot. Here you can see the workspace of the flight uh, experiment, uh, which is consists from two rooms. The first room is equipped with the motion capture cameras, uh, and uh, directly in this room, uh, the robot flies in this uh, place. Also, you can see the UV safety operator, uh, which is necessary to prevent some unseen robot uh, In the second room, I installed the VR cameras and the computer with wings. The operator can freely move by their hands in this location. Here you can see the experimental results of the flight test, uh, which are presented as uh, changing of several motor parts of the simulator, uh, pitch and roll orientation of the UAV in time. Also, I marked on the figures the key stages of the aerial manipulation, whether contact with object 
object grasping, object eating, and object release. Um, contact with object leads to the some accelerations uh, in the feature orientation of the robot. This high maximum uh, value of which uh, equals uh, 7.15 degrees. Uh, the object grasping and the object eating after two seconds uh, effect affected on the oscillations in the roll direction with maximum value 2.61 degrees. Uh, during the object movement, we can observe the uh, increased uh, thermal marks for the uh, manipulator joint. So, and also, uh, the, I calculated the standard deviation for the pitch and roll orientation for the robot, uh, where the uh, standard deviations for pitch and roll equal uh, 2.3 degrees and uh, 0 0.83 degrees. Now, moving now, now to the user study. The first user study is dedicated to the test of the, of, of the process of the uh, telepersonal robot in personal condition uh, using uh, two types of tests, namely a specialized uh, controller and the uh, variable inputs. Also, to provide the more good uh, visual feedback for the operator, we use the real time screen from the hand on the of the robot. 17 participants uh, performed uh, five types of tasks. Seven types of objects. Whether we are uh, the moving of the object from the one box, box to another box, uh, placing the ball from the upper box into the tape in the bottom box, uh, taking the cube at, at its uh, location located to the robot at an angle, and the second full task is usage of cylinder and the cube. And uh, you saw the e demonstration uh, in the upper right corner. So, uh, in the in the second user study, given here, um, in the second user study, we test uh, the whole telepathy uh, uh, in the simulated VR scenario. Uh, for this goal, uh, the participants should uh, control the robot flight using VR controller, and uh, to control the manipulator position uh, using both devices from the first user study. Uh, uh, at this, at the, uh, they should uh, take in the initial position of the robot uh, gas analyzer and fly through the flying tunnel with go to detect the uh, gas source. In case of the in gas detection, they should place the gas analyzer, which is shown in the reaper, uh, at the epicenter of the gas. And you saw this demonstration in the right uh, bottom. The participants rated the convenience, uh, quality of the control devices, and the amount of visual feedback using a uh, bipolar uh, Likert type uh, seven point scale. Uh, also, I showed the most important question and uh, the statistics on them on this slide. Uh, so, according to the survey results, uh, the most of the parameters uh, for both devices are comparable. However, uh, using the analysis of parents, uh, I can conclude uh, that the type of device uh, affects uh, on the naturalness of the interaction with virtual reality. Thus, the move based interface is more natural and intuitive. Also, I should note, it, uh, note uh, one drawback. Uh, during the user study, some of the participants felt the VR sequences uh, during control of the flight. Uh, that can be the reason of uh, increased fatigue by the here you can see the trajectories uh, uh, for the repro position of the robot, yellow line, um, uh, position of the creator's list, green and red dashed lines for RCCY controller and uh, move waste interface for pick and fall tasks. We can observe on the central figure that, yes, here that the uh, grip trajectory is better following for the move waste interface. Also, I can notice that the amplitude of the jerkies of the jerkies for the VR controller is uh, higher than for the MU based interface. So, to estimate the to evaluate the performance of both devices, 
I calculated the average speed for all the uh, tasks, each participant, and presented it a box, box plot from the right side of the slide. Uh, so using the ANOVA statistics, I understood that the type of device can make the effect on the manipulation speed. And the manipulation speed is faster by 27% uh, for the manipulation. So in conclusion of the first part, I can say that the immobilist interface is more natural, intuitive, and uh, fast interface is better matching to the target uh, signal. Now I'm going to my next part of the presentation about uh, project local gear, the local algorithms for the learning gear. The robot uh, consists of uh, hexacopter and uh, landing gear attached to each part. Uh, the landing gear uh, is assembled from four legs with two degree of freedoms, uh, which is located in increment 90 degrees to the central axis of the robot. Also, the new joints uh, include the uh, optical port center. Uh, here I showed the video on the drone gear robot and the local gear algorithm. In the first part, you can see the landing procedure of the robot. Uh, so initially, the robot was developed only for landing adaptation that restricts on the possible motion of the robot up to the wall. However, using the heuristic approach, I researched and developed uh, the new locomotion algorithm this robot. And using the MATLAB, I visualized the motion cycle of the robot. You can see it now. Uh, so, and also, I visualize the possible motion of the robot uh, on the surface with obstacle. Uh, height, of, height of the obstacle equals uh, to force complete. So you can see that the robot rise on the obstacle now. And after that, the robots uh, go down from this obstacle. So, and finally, you can see the demonstration of the robot motion during the line. You can see several steps of the robot. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the robot uh, have, has several limitations. First of all, the uh, robotic legs uh, is located at, the, at an angle to each other. That provides a stable uh, robot landing, uh, but at the same time, it implicates the robot motion in any direction. Uh, secondly, the footpaths can deviate from the uh, chin link on an angle alpha uh, about of 30 degrees. This angle determines uh, the length of the step and prevent from the robot rollover. Using heuristic approach, I uh, determine that the simplest uh, motion algorithm for the robot is in plane con containing the opposite leg. For example, uh, black leading leg and supporting orange. So the legs lying in our plane uh, will transfer to the new position simultaneously. And uh, uh, the name of the legs is side legs. Directly during this motion, the robot changed uh, its position. So based on the experimental results, I clarified the motion sequences of the robot and uh, calculated the motion mode. Uh, initially, the motion sequence consists of uh, seven uh, stages. Firstly, the robot inclined from the equilibrium position on the supporting leg. During the second and third stages, the robot uh, uh, moves the leading leg to the new position. Uh, then, at the fourth stages, the robot uh, re redistributes the center of mass from the supporting leg to the leading leg uh, during the movement of the side legs. Then, at the fifth and sixth positions uh, stages, uh, the robot uh, rise up the supporting leg and put it in new position. And finally, the robot is leveled in the new location. During each phase, uh, the robot, uh, the projection of the center of mass of the robot, uh, is located in the support polygon, uh, which formed by the position of the footpath remaining on the ground. It is necessary for the stable robot uh, standing on the ground. So, uh, because uh, since the heuristic approach assumes the uh, experimental selection of the stable phases of the robot, it was necessary to estimate uh, the robot's trajectory. 
For this goal, I applied the expression, the classical expression for calculation of radius vector to the center of mass of the system. Each radius vector of components uh, was calculated using acceleration from initial coordinate system, coordinate system of each component. Because the uh, movement of the robot to a new position uh, performed uh, directly up during the movement of the side legs, uh, we can calculate the length step uh, for the heuristic approach but as difference between initial and previous position previous values of uh, parameters i. i indices is correspond to the uh, length. Here you can see the uh, theoretical uh, curve of center of mass robot and the experimental curve of the center of robot. Uh, so uh, after the test of during this approach, I determined that the uh, robot motion should be performed uh, with the uh, Three type of motions, whether the robot inclination on supporting a leading leg, splitting of the leg to new position, and from transfer. On the left figure, we can see that the uh, curve connecting four and five points assembles the complete sequoia. Thus, I choose the complete sequoia as a particular for the uh, transfer of central points. Also, according to the paper of Shaw, uh, the trajectory uh, containing the parabola segments. Uh, provides the uh, smooth uh, movement of the robot on a new terrain. terrain. Thus, I choose the trouble trajectory as the trajectory for the robot inclination and the displacement on the leg. Now I show you uh, the equations for the trajectories of each type of motion. Uh, the system of equations for the uh, robot inclination trajectory depends from the initial position of the robot. Uh, initial inclination angle and height of the squad leg. Uh, the system of question for the leg displacement depends from the initial position of the path, the length and height of the step. The equations for the cuplet cycloid uh, can be calculated uh, through the A and B parameters of the cycloid, which depends from the length of the step, height of the cycloid, and the initial inclination angle. In general, uh, we can optimize the movement of the robot by changing on the three parameters initial inclination angle, height of the exploit, and length of the step. Uh, also, it was necessary to estimate the dynamic behavior of the robot. Thus, I accepted the following assumption the slippage between the uh, footpaths and ground are absent. Uh, the friction forces are not taken into account. Also, I didn't consider the effects from the springs uh, with goal to decrease the order of the system. Uh, given the assumptions, uh, I can say that the throw motors, uh, loads, and uh, vector forces uh, are the same uh, for the side legs. Thus, now we know in the uh, motion applications, we can calculate the throw motor loads. For this goal, I applied the Lagrangian dynamic simulation. And I derived the nine equations with uh, certain unknowns. To solve the problem of lack of equations, I applied the kinetic static methods. And uh, I wrote uh, four equations uh, for of conservation of moments around the axis at the center of robot, uh, y axis at the center of pressure of each component. Finally, I got the system of equations of uh, certain equations with certain unknowns to collect the six row motor points. This system was solved using that and uh, we can store the results of this equation. So here you can see the changing of the joint angles, hip and knee joints, inclination angle on the left figure, uh, motor torques in time in central figure, and motion sequences of the robot during one motion cycle is rising the leading leg from the step with height four centimeters. At the first stage, uh, the, we can observe the chart decrease the volume of torques due to the robot inclination from the equilibrium position and the gravity points. During the second and fourth stages, uh, we see the increased volume of torques uh, for the legs remaining on the ground. At the third stages, uh, the uh, torques loads are redistributed from the bottom leg to the leading leg. And finally, at the fifth stage, 
we can see the increasing process of the volume of torques due to the robot movement to the equilibrium position. Uh, the experiments of the robot motion using motion object systems confirm that the robot can move with the average speed of uh, 0 0.75 centimeters per second. Uh, the step size is equal equals uh, six centimeters, and the ten division of your orientation equals nine degrees. In conclusion, I developed uh, two, the group of nine robots consist of uh, John D robots and other robots, uh, which are equipped with the multifunctional robotic limbs and control the motive to the filtration system. Secondly, a normal work based filtration system uh, using a new based interface. All of the operators to control uh, their own manipulation naturally and intuitively through the digital, digital pin of the robot. And uh, finally, based on the theoretical and experimental results, a uh, normal automotion algorithm for the landing gear of multi rotors uh, was proposed. Also, I should note uh, some limitations of my physics. Firstly, the study of high speed aerial manipulation in the robot motion is not yet conducted. Therefore, the movements of the robot limbs were performed at the low speed of the zero motor, up to 0 0.6 uh, radians per second. Uh, to cancel the sudden movement of the robots and uh, to prevent the unstability of the robot. Secondly, the VR motion sequences can be partially eliminated by applying the synchronization of the UAV orientation and uh, uh, human mounted display orientation. One of the Possible future research based on my thesis can be devoted, uh, dedicated to the development of hybrid. It's necessary to develop uh, robot limbs with multifunctional poles or grippers. Uh, also, IMU optical and torque sensors can be used uh, to collect data about uh, robot state and the uh, surrounding environment. Also, it, I, think, I consider that it's necessary to apply reinforcement learning algorithms uh, to get more, better performance of the robot. So, which can be realized by creation of the detailed dynamic model of the robot. I consider that uh, this development really can be important potential uh, technological research. At the end, uh, sorry. So my uh, results of the work were published in two journal papers. One is uh, author in JMAS journal. Uh, second one is for after uh, at our journal. Also, I participated in a conference and uh, I'm author of the patent with Ivan Trainer. And uh, one more important uh, paper was submitted to the Journal of Intelligent Robotics, but it's under review now. Uh, so, at the end, I would say some closing words to my colleagues. Uh, I'm grateful to Daria Tinkatova. Uh, Yuri Sakitsev, Son Agishev, uh, for their contribution to my research. Also, I thanks to Amash Fadli for their advices uh, dedicated to the development of electrical circuits. And finally, of course, I thankful to my research supervisor, Mr. Sidikov, for their bold ideas for the best laboratory in Russia. So, that's all. Thank you for your attention. I will be glad to answer your questions. Okay, thank you very much for detailed and very interesting presentation. So now we go to to our reviewers. So I would like to ask maybe the first we start from we start from uh, constant contact or yeah maybe if it is possible we start from contact and. Uh, do you hear us? So can you present your opinion and also can you address some questions or problems? Okay, thank you very much uh, for the invitation to be in the commission. Very interesting work, yeah. Also, I would like to thank the presenter uh, for uh, this interesting results. And uh, I would uh, like, uh, uh, to go uh, to the first part um, uh, of the um, uh, your uh, PhD thesis, 
and I would like the, to, to ask a question about uh, the dynamic model of the manipulator. Yeah, so you explained that you uh, perform this uh, modeling and uh, MATLAB simulink. You also presented some uh, torques, uh, uh, which uh, can be used uh, to estimate the load in the joints. Uh, but for me, it's not uh, really clear uh, how these uh, torques uh, are used for a real control. Because what I understood is that uh, you use uh, position-based uh, control in your experiments. And uh, the question is, are those uh, torques calculated from the dynamic models used in some way in the control or are they used only for the design of the system and uh, for the presenting of the uh, of these calculated torques? So what I was talking about is uh, section 2.4, yeah, in your dissertation on the page uh, 45. Thank you for your question. So yes, I can clarify. Could you please? So yes, I created the model only for manipulator and uh, with the parameter torques uh, were calculated uh, for the real position of the manipulator. And, um, here in my PID controllers for the thermal parts. And also uh, because we have uh, influence from the manipulator from the uh, base, which is the POV, uh, we just um, experimentally uh, determine the optimal PID coefficients for the robot during manipulation. We perform a series of tests and uh, decrease a little bit uh, volume of the gain and uh, increase the volume of uh, integral gain. Um, but um, uh, uh, the real system, your uh, manipulator, uh, what type of uh, uh, servos are used? Is this position control servos or is it torque control servos? Yes, uh, it's position control server, uh, position control uh, algorithm because we uh, can read position of the uh, from the servo motors, and that's all. Okay, it means that uh, this uh, dynamic model is uh, used uh, just for yeah, the visualization and to to. It's not uh, really used for the control. Yeah, this dynamic model. And uh, yes, yes, it's true. And uh, to estimate the loads uh, which can uh, affect it on the construction of the manipulator. And uh, of course, we uh, using this dynamic model and this proof that the most critical position, but it's uh, usual that is elongated in front of the robot. And uh, I can mention one note that the, I say that the maximum uh, payload of the robot is 400 grams. However, after the calculation of these uh, dynamic loads, I understood that uh, 400 grams it's possible only when we manipulate by the objects under the robot. But if we want uh, to manipulate by the objects in front of the robot, near the robot, uh, we should uh, uh, work with uh, 200 grams. Good, so thank you very much. Uh, so the second question uh, will be related to uh, this uh, teleoperation system. Uh, I really like uh, this um, point in your work with uh, uh, system uh, based on IMU and um, this uh, sensors for estimation of the angles uh, in the uh, human uh, arm joints so i don't remember which slide it was with the angles you measure uh, let's me uh, perhaps six or so if, or for the oh, sorry 
constant professor. We, you want to see the trajectories of the gripper and uh, of the wrist of the operator, yes? Yeah. No, no, I would like to see the angles of, of the human arm, yeah, of the operator. The picture of the, with the photo of interface, yes? Um, for example, um, on in your dissertation, it's a figure 3.6, yeah, where we have uh, uh, angles um, estimated using IMU and uh, bending sensors. This one? Yeah, this one. So um, uh, you estimate the angles and uh, good, uh, it's not on the slide, but uh, you have the uh, graphs in your uh, uh, written. Um, I have graphs in the thesis, yes? Because uh, in presentation, I didn't present the graphs for the uh, uh, interface with bending sensors and I'm using this. Uh, for example, this is a graph uh, 3.6, yeah, in your uh, uh, PhD. I know. Uh, uh, and uh, the angles are looking very nice. We have a shoulder joint, uh, elbow, yes. and wrist yes. joint. Uh, I didn't show it in the presentation, but I know what about you. So okay. yeah, uh, for the flex bending sensor, we have really good uh, data reading. Uh, it's more smooth than the 4MU sensors because it's analog uh, sensors. Yes, However, the after the experiments, we understood yeah. that it's really difficult. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Yeah. I would like to ask a question first, yeah, before you answer. <laughs> yes, sorry. Uh, so uh, we have this um, angles in the graph, yeah, which uh, look very nice. And my question is, did you compare these angles uh, you calculate from this uh, type of sensors with some true measurement? For example, using uh, some uh, optical system. So the question is how precise uh, uh, are uh, the estimation of the angles in this uh, system you have developed? Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, we didn't use the motion capture system for this role. Uh, we just compare um, our target set point from the operator with the target uh, with the data uh, obtained from the real robot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And okay. we compare just uh, the latency a little bit uh, for the VR controller and our move assistance. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so then it's uh, also clear. So thank you very much. And uh, also to this topic, I have a question about the time delays yeah, in uh, the whole system. Uh, good in the video, uh, we see that it's some delay, which is uh, natural, yeah, it's uh, not bad, yeah, it's like it is in reality. Uh, but can you comment uh, here um, about this problem, yeah, with the time delay, did you, uh, perform some experiments with uh, different delays or uh, did you investigate this uh, problem or it's for you for this stage of the development not important? Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, we just try to decrease uh, the delay because it's a really important part of this deliberation system and uh, because we connected a lot of systems such as lockup, motion capture system, uh, flight control, the robot, and uh, manipulator control, and our uh, wearable device. The first delay was really significant. But after some uh, experiments, we optimized our code, uh, just control code, uh, with goal to parallelize the process. We got the like uh, 0 0.7 seconds delay. Uh, this is the uh, best value for us. But also I investigate this problem and find uh, some solutions in the scientific papers. Also uh, in one papers from the DIR of, of, of the coil, 
earlier. So, but in my tools, I uh, just optimize uh, this parameter exponentially. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then I would uh, like to jump to the last uh, part of your work with this uh, legit robot. Yeah. So uh, it's um, yeah uh, interesting um, uh, approach um, to use uh, some uh, uh, actuated legs to to land on uh, uh, ground which is not even, uh, even yeah uh, which is not flat. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, everybody knows that the problem is uh, here's the payload and the additional weight yeah, you have to put on the system. Uh, can you uh, comment uh, this point? Yeah, so here, for example, what additional weight you or what is the weight of your legs yeah, in the system and how it is uh, comparable with the uh, payload? Yeah, uh, because uh, many people um, following your work uh, would ask the question, is it worse uh, to modify my robot now yeah, uh, in order to be able to, to, to land on some difficult terrains or uh, if I uh, modify this in that way, so there's uh, no chance with uh, current uh, technology to get uh, some reasonable payload with, uh, with a robot. Okay, thank you for the question. Maybe a little bit later. A little bit later. Yes. So yeah, here I showed the uh, weight of the robot. Can can we see the slide uh, again? One second, sorry. Yes. Yeah, you can see. Uh, so uh, the total weight of the total weight of the robot uh, equals 5.67 degrees oh, kilograms. So, but the weight of the legs is really small. It's only 2,270 grams. And um, so, but uh, what is the uh, heaviest part of the robot? Of course, it's uh, the accumulators. And also in this robot, I use two accumulators, one for the, to provide the uh, power supply of the legs and one to provide the power supply of the uh, propulsion system. So it is the first part which can be optimized of course, by uh, addition of uh, some uh, converters. But uh, this robot uh, can have a lot very small, like also 200 grams, but it's possible to optimize it. Uh, we can optimize the construction uh, accumulators and uh, this is the reason why I say about uh, uh, the possible future research, because I think uh, we want to improve this robot. Uh, this goal is that the robot will be able to implement some also aerial manipulation tasks. Mm -hmm. But at this time, it's small. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what is the weight of uh, the batteries uh, here and how long is the flight time? Sorry, could you repeat this? Uh, what is the weight of the batteries and how long this multicopter can fly? Okay, flight time is the usual, like 10 minutes. Uh, the battery uh, for the uh, power supply of the uh, Gexacopter is about 700 grams or maybe 900 grams. It's the heaviest part. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, so the battery is the main problem for the fine robots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, and, but nevertheless, it's not like it's um, a bad point in the design. I think it's uh, really interesting to implement systems like this. Yeah, it can be used, for example, in cooperation with another a bigger uh, robot, which is used as carrier. Yes, yeah? so, and this one can be used for a very short uh, missions. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so there were questions I wanted uh, to clarify uh, here and um, uh, con congratulations for this great work. Thank you very much, Professor Kondak. Thank you very much, Professor Kondak, for, for your question, for your detailed question and many questions. Thank you. So we go to the next reviewer, Professor Kajan.
Dr. Macron. Uh, Hi, uh, can you hear me? Since, uh, can you express your opinion and yeah. indicate some strengths and weakness or maybe some concrete questions? Okay, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, I was quite excited. And uh, yeah, the thesis is actually very fun, very fun. Uh, so it, very good work. And um, okay, uh, let me, as I am quite excited, uh, actually there are several small questions. So uh, let me start. And um, my first question is about the uh, third person viewpoint. Uh, actually, I have asked the same question in the in the previous round, and you answered very uh, correctly. But I am still wondering uh, how the third person view can be achieved in a true real world environment, such as in a disaster scene. Uh, perhaps in a disaster scene, the motion capture device are not available. So what do you think about that situation for, for the third person viewpoint? Thank you for this question. Uh, so the, my ideas about this was uh, in the plane of uh, usage, maybe it can be solved in two ways. Uh, mm -hmm. We can uh, construct them bigger robots. We and equip with uh, the, some optical sensors like the LIDAR. But I think it's, Heavy and maybe we can simplify it. For example, uh, I think it's possible to use a group of drones. For example, uh, one main drone will be used as uh, for aerial manipulation, and uh, several drones with uh, onboard cameras uh, can stream to the server uh, uh, the video, and uh, we can use apply some computer vision algorithms and. Uh, uh, build the environment in the virtual reality, I think. And also, I read the, the paper that you sent me in the review. So yeah, the, uh, if you can use uh, uh, the view from the camera just from one second uh, before, it's all possible. I see. Oh, uh, thank you very the much. The reconstruction of the environment yeah. using computer vision algorithms Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think. I think your, your answers are quite right. And um, my second question is about uh, the local gear, uh, the, the the running gear. And uh, um, I am not an expert on this type of robot, so perhaps uh, my question might be a kind of stupid. But uh, if I understand correctly. I think you made a landing feet of the drone to walk in an uneven environment. But um, I'm, I'm not so sure why you did that, because uh, I guess uh, you could basically use a drone's uh, functionality to fly up a little bit and move and fly down a little bit. So perhaps uh, you can achieve the locomotion by just a drone's original functionality and uh, some kind of stable landing systems, I think. But, uh, but you made this time a very sophisticated um, foot, a uh, feet. So I'm wondering why you did that. Yeah, that's my question. Or maybe in other words, uh, why that kind of functionality is really necessary? Okay. Um, the algorithm which was developed by me uh, allows to decrease the power consumption of the robot. I see. Uh, really, because uh, then we fly, uh, we need more energy and we can fly uh, really a little time. Thus, uh, we can, in the future, I also think about the uh, usage of two functions. Sometimes flies and lands, and then walk. Uh, but at this time, I just tested the landing procedure and working on the robot with uh, some obstacles with height not more than four centimeters. So, uh, and the goal was, I think, uh, 
gives the opportunity to the landing of each one developed only for landing uh, initially to give this uh, robot opportunity to work. And uh, I try to uh, extend this functionality as much as possible. So, and of course, we can decrease the power consumption. I see. Okay, yeah. And, uh, and also, I think uh, it might be possible to use the flying functionality and foot functionality at the same time. I mean that when you want to move up the foot, perhaps you can assist that movement by uh, proper, by the, by the drone's functionality. D did you have, did you think about this kind of consideration? Did you think about the truly combining the flying functionality and walking functionality in, in a simultaneous way? Yes, I think about it. And uh, also we can use it for example, decreasing uh, of the weight of the robot because we can uh, uh, switch on the powers in the propulsion of the robot. We can fly a little bit or just uh, get some power, uh, rising power of the robot and uh, the working will be easy. And the combination of this is really important in future, future yeah. But I didn't apply it. Uh, okay, yeah. So uh, let me ask uh, finally the very small technical question. Um, it's about the penguin hole task that you did, did, and uh, in a virtual reality thing, I, I believe. And uh, actually, in my experience, uh, especially when you are using Unity environment, the um, uh, it is quite difficult to simulate the force. And uh, in my case, it was quite difficult to achieve two finger grip for the penguin hole. So I am curious, how did you achieve this virtual reality physics simulation? Did, did, uh, so, so did you use some kind of uh, uh, physical engine or something? Uh, okay. So just, I think it's a good construction of the gripper because the gripper uh, have some, uh, just uh, curve uh, surface of the uh, grip. And uh, this allows uh, to participant uh, to take the cylinder and locate it in the cup. And also we didn't fix the cup on the, uh, Bottom on the boxes. This goal that the apparatus will be able to assemble the construction as they want. And uh, as I mentioned in my thesis, uh, I think half of the participants uh, assembled the um, just uh, injured the cylinder in the cup and up it on the bottom, on the upper box. So just construction, I think, uh, all of us provides uh, reliable data results. But it's simple, not uh, adaptive, just design of the group. Okay, yeah, thank and you very much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, addition. yeah, yeah, please. Sorry. Uh, because uh, we have a good uh, uh, um, sensitivity of the manipulators, then we control our variable input. I think it's all us to precise uh, uh, process uh, near the ob objects. Mm -hmm. Enough to say, it was not so <laughs> good, but. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. And, uh, and again, thank you very much for your exciting presentation. Yeah, that's all for my uh, comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Kakimoto. Thank you for your very good and deep questions. So, okay, so we go to the next uh, expert, the next reviewer, uh, Professor Ferrer. Uh, so, Gonzalo, can you express your opinion and also weakness, strengths, or questions? Okay. Thank you for the presentation. 
I would also like to congratulate you because I think you have put here a lot of work, right? So there's a lot of um, evaluation, experiments, implementation. I wrote on the review that um, there's also other collaborators which uh, you have knowledge. So that's also part of, um, you know, our work nowadays. I would like to say that overall the work, I see that it's divided in two main topics. I wonder what would happen if you just focused on one of them, right? Like, uh, because to me, yes, there's a connection. You did this effort on your thesis to bring them together, but it's, it's probably not a very strong thread, that connection. It's definitely something. So kinematics is definitely the ingredient that bonds these two approaches, the, um, well, virtual kind of environment and locomotion. But to my feeling, I think on your thesis, probably you should have chosen one of them, focus on them and just go deeper because they have interesting topics, both of them. That being said, this is just like something to improve still. It's very usual thing to have on thesis, separate things, maybe not just two, maybe a more, but I'm just saying that just for aiming for perfection, I would go on one topic, focus on them, because I think you draw interesting results on, um, well, on these research lines. Let me go now with um, some questions. I would like to comment a little on this uh, topic that has already been asked for you, the uh, delays. So this is important thing. Uh, my comment is a follow-up question. Have you considered like here some degree of self-autonomy? Because what happened with the lays is that if they are tolerable, user, let's say that does not feel punished by the lays. Uh, but if the delay is large enough, several seconds, tens of seconds, then there's really loss of feedback, right? And human um, teleoperators might suffer. So did you experience, like, did you thought on this problem? Did you start doing some, I mean, automating part of the process just to alleviate this problem? Can you comment on this? Yes, okay, thank you for this question. Uh, so, yes, we have, because, of course, both robots is the prototypes, we have some, Difficult during the experiments. And um, then the delay was too long. Uh, mostly it was in the first part. Uh, it's really difficult to take the audience. Uh, about the whole control of the robot, it was not so significant. Just the operator waits a little bit for the, um, some next motion of the robot, which he wants yeah, to see in the virtual reality. However, with the like, uh, delays more than I think two seconds. It's not it's not impossible. It's impossible to uh, take them. Yes. We we try, but uh, for this goal, uh, we try to optimize the only from the what control part. We just optimize the parallel processing of the commands, and uh, also as I mentioned to the. It's, in contact. Uh, it's possible to apply some additional algorithms with some uh, maybe prediction of the robot motion. And uh, yeah. also this maybe improvement of the communication. Because in my case, we use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and it's not so good. No, no. And we can uh, just try to test uh, some another system. Example, maybe radio control because we don't send uh, uh, we send real steam, steam video from the gripper, but we can show it somehow because radio control is often used for the real yeah. So it can be used. Uh, so I can press, we can press uh, the communication system and it applies each method. Yes, so my question was on that. Um, you can remove delays, but I think they will be there. So this was just a kind of pointing out that 
giving some degree of self autonomy or oh. adding some out uh you know or just predicting that you were saying that you still need feedback basically it's changing the point of view that you are solving this problem right now so this is kind of continuation right i'm, I'm just pointing at that out because the delays if they are there make this task impossible yes i think you are right it's possible to play the shared tool. for example for we can use uh, autonomous flight of the robot during so sometimes then the for example operator is the uh, picture of the surrounding environment of robot and uh, for example operators uh, decide to stop this flight and change it in home yeah i think it's the better way because mm -hmm. uh, also for example for uh, for industrial application uh, we know the map of the uh, pipelines for example and the uh, over uh, structure and we can just multiply to part of our robot and then just mm -hmm. the my okay next question um on the teleoperated robot, what is the minimum degree of freedom that you consider here? Did you try to, because now what you have is a uh, uh, flying quadrupter with a serial manipulator plus a gripper. So this is very redundant. Do you really need all this redundancy? Do you think you can remove some degree of freedom on the manipulator and still achieve? So can you comment on this? Because this is a design choice, but I, I'm sure that it has consequences, right? Both empirical that you have observed and on the assume. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's a good question because uh, in this construction of the robot, I decrease it. Because uh, uh, often uh, the aerial manipulator has additional degree of freedom for the rotation of the uh, manipulator uh, around the axis, that axis. Yes. But it's not necessary because we have uh, six degree of freedom of our quadrotor. We can move a little bit on the side. We can rotate our manipulator by the changing position orientation of the robot. So I think at this time is optimal. So optimal, you don't have redundancy. I think yes, it's it's okay because uh, we can uh, possess our robot near the our design place and just by changing the height of the manipulator and uh, just pressure in the top, we can take all the in some caves, so another, another holes. With this is necessary for this uh, for degree of freedom of enabling. Okay, but that's redundancy, right? So you have redundancy on the position. Uh, redundancy. So redundancy yes. means that you can achieve the same n effect or position. It by has, different no. uh, state no. variables. In this case, would be moving the quadrotor or extending the arm. Uh, yes. yes, I can see. I cannot answer on it. So um, the quadrotor, for example, with uh, only one dog gripper, will not be able to manipulate the front. Mm -hmm. For example, this is the problem. My robot can hold this. This is why to do it with this, we can we should uh, use what degree of the mm -hmm. But how can we decrease more? But it's more difficult. For example, we can apply just a movement in the one axis of the some uh, and end the grip. We can this on one go, but I'm not sure that yeah. it will be more convenient for the Okay, no, I think that this is a compromise. It's not that there's a, usually you reduce, I mean, it's not that you can have a unique minimum degree of freedom because compensating for fluctuation from the position is possible with the manipulator, right? So I think you need this kind of process. Okay, but it's good that you thought on the system and you improve it at least removing, um, well, one <laughs> actuator. Okay. Um, uh, just to be sure, what is the kind of feedback that you have on the deliberation system? I've seen that on the globe, you have some motors. So you have kind of um, this and, and visual, right? Is there any other? Uh, totally, in, we uh, plan to use uh, additional 
well, fiber that I have to break on the glass. But we didn't connect it in uh, the user fabric because it also slowed down our communication okay. at, this, at this stage. But it's possible. So at this time, we see how we are sent. Uh, that means we see the surrounding environment of the robot. Uh, we have the feedback, visual feedback from the uh, camera on the gripper, real time video mm -hmm. stream. But it can be uh, improved by the details. And also, I think it's necessary to improve the perception of the operator of the uh, work area. Because sometimes uh, operators try to lean a little bit forward because they think that they, they can elongate my operator more in the front. But if we have better success feedback, we can give information about, uh, for example, we touch the work area. The, uh, Okay. Or we can get uh, feedback from the uh, after the graph. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could do a mapping. So this is not the experiment, but you could be a small mapping right before getting to yes, the yes. final position. And this will give you this context. Okay. Um, have you thought on using different sensors, like some sort of force uh, sensor on the gripper or something else that would help you? Because I've seen that you have problems, right? Moment that uh, you start interacting, so the touching changes your dynamics, uh, and the way the system responds is well with some oscillations. But did you thought on adding like more sensors to overcome some of these problems? Yes, it's true. Also, uh, I have some things about it. Uh, I attach uh, the four sensors on the gripper. But uh, we plan to connect it again to the fiber that uh, then we feel uh, uh, the, the robot feels the contact with object. We can uh, send information to the feedback that the object is there. But we don't apply it due to the increased latency. Yeah, but that's the question. Yeah. So maybe you can have more latency if you have, let's say, more intelligent algorithms assisting the operator, or you can produce latency and just have visual feedback, which is enough for a person, right? So I think this is an open question that you opened. You didn't go, of course, I mean, you have to close the thesis yeah. at some point, but uh, this still is, you know, choice of you, right? It's not answering the full, or giving the full perspective. Okay, um, more question on the IMU. Um, you are using what is the what is the state variables that you are estimating here? So the IMU is estimating 3D poles. Is it estimating only orientation? What is the? I, I was following up. So you have implemented this work by Magwig, yes. right? So is there like any variation on this? Uh, we uh, change it a little bit, but not so much because. Firstly, I tried to use only one IMU sensor for orientation of the, uh, our list. So in the role, this is just, ah, okay. but however, uh, the IMU sensors can provide good data in each uh, for some reason, I don't know why. And we decided to simplify this. We just use one angle from orientation from the each IMU sensor and we read. Okay. Okay, so and you they use magic people. So you treated arms as planar uh, three R, and then you just calculated angles. Yes. Okay. Um, so was this problem due to drift? On also yes. Also because yes. So this is additional. Okay. But we try to. Did you calibrate? It. Yes, because it's not necessary just to receive. Uh, at least one and two. But even without calibration, it was drifting and not showing. Depends. Sometimes it's drifting, sometimes it's very noisy. Okay. Okay. Well, I think if you go to full 3D pose estimation, you need to do proper calibration and maybe you will see this problem a little. It's still, drift is going to be there. That's what I was surprised. That uh, if you have to recalibrate things or not, 
if you saw some drip on your both estimation or things were stable, but now I see if you just kind of simplify the state variables and okay, okay, good. Well, it works. Um, questions, okay, <laughs> almost finished. Yes, um, so that's another very interesting comment from uh, Pro Pro Professor Kajimoto and they're actuated uh, local gear. I totally agree with this. Uh, so I see that this locomotion system, it's also very intense, right? So you have servos all the time actuated, just hold your position, so you gain something. Still, the idea is interesting, but probably some underactuated system that would be next thing, or at least something to think about. Now I'm not... Um, I mean, it's just a comment. It's... Okay, um, what else? Yes, I have a comment on the servers. So it's true that this um, um, uh, kinesthetic analysis that you did theoretically is sound, but then there's a big gap with reality, right? When you show figures, um, what your expected kind of trajectories look like is not exactly what they actually look like when you test the evaluation. And this is, well, I think this is, you, you were just getting one limitation that it's okay, you are using these kind of actuators, servos, right, with uh, position control. So there's a lot of artifacts there. I was, I mean, I already comment you on this, but I think you have to be careful on pointing out. So there's a limit in this design, probably you hit it. And if you want to move to, higher, heavier, you would probably need definitely a, pro a different approach. The actuator point of view, doing you know, low level controls. I, I know you I already probably share the same idea, but I just want to, you know, underline this because I think this is, this is the limit that you can get. If you want to improve it, you need to do the design. So for your thesis for landing, it's okay moving this into next steps. Okay, yes. Yes, so I also like your answer on the intelligent design for the creeper. So it's not improving perception, sometimes it's just improving the design such that you can overcome problems. But then this opens the question to what happens with uncertainty here. You are not really treating this anywhere, right? So you have a precise motion capture system, you overcome some of these limitations on the gripper with intelligent design, kind of being robust to it. But where would you put here uncertainty? How would you treat uncertainty? Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you for this question. Any comments as well? Uh, it's possible to fall into it. Uh, firstly, uh, the reason of uncertainties and the, all the location of the main fighter do it all the backlash of the thermometers. Uh, and we can, uh, for example, we can improve the design of the motors by changing the thermometers on the uh, hot control motors. Uh, this allows us to control uh, emit, uh, directly the parts of the motors, and uh, we can apply maybe more intellectual controller to the manipulator, and we can uh, provide the desired uh, certainty. The position of the robot near the object. Mm -hmm. It's like combination, it's necessary. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Professor Ferreira, uh, for your comments and also for many detailed questions. And the next reviewer is our colleague, uh, Professor Samo. So, Andre, can we ask you to? present your opinion and also to ask questions. Yeah, sure. Uh, Grigori, thank you so much for your nice and I would say even great work. And also would like to congratulate, congratulate your scientific advisor for such a nice PhD thesis. So um, a number of questions uh, have been already asked, but I have a couple of them in addition. So, for example, uh, in terms of artificial intelligence, um, 
how would you improve uh, your work? You, you have already started discussing it in terms of your future, future work. So for example, which artificial intelligence methods could be deployed uh, on board of your uh, UAV uh, and which tasks they could uh, help solving. Uh, for example, on wearable system, you could use uh, Kalman filters with uh, recurrent neural networks for recognizing activities or gestures of the operator. And what about uh, UAV? So just what is your opinion and your vision? Okay, thank you for your question. I'm not a specialist in the artificial intelligence, but I have some ideas how can we apply it. Uh, so, as I mentioned uh, in the future outlook, uh, I really think that it's necessary to use the reinforcement learning algorithm for the uh, improvement of performance of the walking algorithm. It's necessary because, uh, and not only walking algorithm, but also maybe polling, because uh, we have enough. Uh, sensors, for example, torque sensor, optical sensors, uh, and position sensors on the robot. Also, I didn't mention, but the, each few parts of the robot have uh, embedded uh, IMU sensors also for, to detect the orientation of the few parts as well. Thus, we can uh, collect weather data, and based on the weather data, we can improve by creation of the detailed model of the robot and uh, applying some machine learning algorithms. So I think it's possible to learn robot uh, to move uh, for good, better. And uh, also, if you mention about the um, elaboration, it's possible to use uh, machine learning for the gesture. It's also hot topic. Uh, I saw several papers and also uh, some magisters uh, work on it. Uh, Worked on it uh, in our laboratory. Yeah, I think it's possible and it's necessary, maybe, because uh, for the aerial manipulation, we used uh, our wearable interface, IMU based interface, and we are controlling. We control the flight of the robot. And uh, if you want to replace the VR controller and uh, will be independent from the space station, it's necessary to design a smart glove or maybe to apply the computer vision to understand just. Uh, and this can be applied to the just uh, use several gestures uh, based on the neural network uh, to control the flight of the robot. For example, move forward, backward, side, rotation, and such like this. I think uh, in weather points, it's possible to apply to the algorithm. All right, thank you. Um, another comment. Uh, so there was a question on, on the battery from Professor Conduct. Um, and I was just wondering whether you tried uh, to model the power consumption of your uh, uh, UAV. I'm just asking because I also noticed that you demonstrated a scenario when your UAV uh, flies uh, uh, within harsh environment uh, for, for the sake of performing uh, gas sensing. And basically all these uh, sensors uh, cameras, they are pretty power hungry components and uh, gas sensors. I presume um, you, you are using catalytic or semiconductor sensor, which, uh, well, the industrial uh, copies could uh, consume up to one watt. So I was just wondering, maybe you did not include this information in the final thesis. So did you try to model the power consumption or maybe to perform a sort of a trade-off study on, on this point? Okay, uh, I can clarify uh, about the user scenario. Uh, I didn't detail uh, uh, analysis of how to achieve, but uh, my idea was uh, that, for example, a uh, drone gear robot, uh, which is able to land, walk, and fly, was, uh, can be uh, bigger, should be bigger, and can be as, uh, for example, a server. Yes, for uh, robots such as uh, robot and play. And uh, if you think about the last weekend, uh, spread the part of the uh, uh, processing of the data from the sensors. And also, if we think about the gas analyzer, I 
I analyze information about the possible type of this, I think it's possible to use individual gas analyzers for uh, detection of unspecified uh, gases. So it's, that means uh, we should use individual gas analyzer, not for detection of all gases. And uh, then I mentioned about the, the drone gear um, detect the gas as sources. I mean that, the, for example, based on knowledge or experiments of the uh, people who work in the mines, uh, we can understand, for example, the presence of gas based on the uh, camera data. For example, we see all color. I, sh I think here should be some emission of gas. That means I uh, think that the drone gear will can detect by uh, using information from the camera. Um, this is my answer. Okay, thank you. And uh, the last question, so I'm just uh, curious about synchronization. So what if we add um, just um, extra UAV to your system? So what problems could you envision uh, <laughs> with synchronization and how would you overcome them? Because, uh, well, maybe you could mention some industrial approaches because using Wi-Fi uh, probably is not uh, that, that, I would say, good for such an industrial Cases. So, what is your opinion on synchronization? Okay, yes, you are right. The Wi-Fi is not reliable uh, connection. At the same time, Bluetooth have a not so big uh, area. Of However, we have tendency in improvement of this. So, I think, uh, yeah, if we directly connected all several runs to our VR system. Uh, we can get uh, modulates, but I think it's necessary to, again, to separate tasks between the robots. For example, one robot should be a server, which will uh, collect data from another robot and uh, send it to the, our for analysis. I think it's the best uh, solution now. And for example, as I mentioned in my studies, it's possible, for example, in case of uh, usage of weather robots in the at the disasters, we can use mobile robots as the server and uh, as a charging station, which can um, uh, get, which will receive all data and uh, I think this uh, data to the robot. I think this is solution. All right, thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for your questions. Yes, thank you, Professor Tom, for your question. Okay, so now I should give them question and comments. So maybe I summarize some of your achievement and some positive comments. So first of all, I am very impressed about that your research is difficult and very multidisciplinary. They need all, not only mechanical skill, I mean, mechanical design, kinematics, forward kinematics, inverse kinematics, and also knowledge of electronic, how to design electronic chip, and also software development. You use not only MATLAB simulin, but also C, C++, and Papel. Yes, yeah, so, so this, this, this was really challenging because this need skill and knowledge in many, many fields. Also, you use motion capture and virtual reality. So this is really very wide scope of different kinds of experts. So this is very positive. Also, I think that your achievement is mostly, of course, I like your publication, especially this publication in IEEE journals, but also in this prestigious conference uh, devoted to advanced robotics is a very good paper. So I think that your achievement is designing of novel virtual based teleoperation system using IN, INU uh, interface. Also, I like your extensive experiments uh, you done with two robots, in, in which was equipped with the robot clinics. Also developing and uh, testing this local gear algorithm 
Okay, so my question is maybe out of scope of your research or is something like about future research. So please imagine that the flying robot is a humanoid robot, which have only two legs. And he also wants to land on very uneven terrain and keep it stable. Or we have robots which we have not uh, four limbs, but say three or five limbs. Do you think that your research would be to some extent useful for such kind of formula, such, such robots which have different kind of limbs, especially two limbs, when you know after landing the, the, the flying robot should keep not only that stable position, but keep also equilibrium? Thank you for this interesting question. Uh, I think uh, here we have uh, two ideas. For example, uh, for if we have a flying uh, humanoid robot, uh, the landing procedure is possible, uh, with which we used uh, because we used the proper sensors in the knee joints. Thus, we can get data from the weather sensors and can stabilize. But it takes time and uh, maybe more better controller. Uh, but if we imagine that uh, one leg uh, was damaged because of some reason, uh, we have two types of the problem. Uh, if the, it is mechanical structure, mechanical damage of the leg, one leg, uh, possibly a robot can work. But uh, the robot was designed uh, for the specified uh, payload. That means uh, the uh, sometime, I think in this short time, we got the overload of some legs. Because we can use, for example, if one leg is damaged, the robot can move uh, if these legs uh, will be as uh, friendly. We just define robot a little bit from the opposite leg, the robot can but the precision of this motion will be not so good. And the uh, second case, if uh, the, we just disconnect from the legs and uh, we can control uh, the position. In this case, the robot can move because we can use, but it will be on the one direction. At least. Um, and again, we will use this leg as a set because the set legs is used to stop uh, during the motion and they uh, rise from the small height during the jump. So this is the answer. Okay, so my second question is related to speed. You mentioned, in my opinion, the speed, the speed of in your experiment is not very impressive. You emphasize in your PhD thesis that the speed is limited also due to safety and to keep the the all performance stable and without any problem. But the question is what should be done in the future. Maybe you give some advice for the future PhD student of Professor what, what to do and what, what is your idea for, for the future to increase the speed? Yes. That the, the experiment would be even more interesting. It's also an important question. Yes. I also want to improve it. So uh, this can be solved in uh, several ways. Again, it can be structural improvements and uh, uh, some algorithm improvements. For example, if we want to change uh, structure, firstly, it's necessary to change the Arduino DUI controller because uh, they also affect on the uh, processing of the commands on the robot. I prefer to use the uh, same. It's statically, it's really better make a control which can also provide uh, the faster motion of the robot, just due to the process. Not so, not so much fast, but fast. Also, it's possible, as I mentioned, about uh, aerial manipulation. It's possible to change the serial motors by the motors, which can be controlled through the motor. Again, we can, uh, we will be sure, in this case, we will be sure that the, on each step, uh, the motors will be more reliable. They will function better with uh, the desired works. And if we didn't make the structural improvements, it's possible. Uh, I think it's necessary 
to add some additional research about the optimization of parameters for the my developed motion angle. It's possible to optimize just three parameters inclination angle, uh, the height of the sphoid, and length of the step. Just uh, I think again it's possible. Unfortunately, I don't know much in general algorithm, but I think here you can just after serious experiments you can improve. So okay, the, the last question of comments. Mm, I wonder why in, in your programming you use so many different language. You use math, you use simulink, you use map, and you use also C and C. I think for for our new student, this would be better if all this program would be user-friendly in one environment. Because maybe for some student it's very difficult to, to learn all this skill. To, many of our students don't know, much, for example, math club. researcher who or this was um, limited by hardware devices like uh, I don't know virtual reality or motion graph. Well what is the reason that you use so many different uh, programs? First I can answer it. At this time we can decrease the language number uh, but some of the language is necessary because for example uh, Unity software works on the uh, C sharp. We couldn't uh, change it. So just uh, we are aware to be designed from the community and uh, programming C uh, If we skip about microcontrollers, it's possible uh, to program there on the Python language. But I'm not sure, but I think not all actually. But now it's uh, uh, area of this application. So, in my case, uh, I have uh, the hard knowledge map up initially. This is the reason why I start the map up. I simulate my robot and I try to use uh, libraries, uh, which uh, send libraries from MATLAB to control robot fully using MATLAB without C, C. Uh, but I understood that the, this time, and the last year they improved some uh, part of the serial connection, but the serial connection wasn't enough to the stable robot function. That I moved to the uh, writing of the code from the C++ part, which is uh, the code which is used on Arduino today, just because it's necessary for human use. But now, and also uh, my colleagues, especially Alan Nagish, helped me with the flight experiments. Uh, program on the Python because uh, a lot of uh, uh, program software for the UAVs uh, desire require this language. It's possible to program on the C, but it's on Python. And after all my research, uh, I think it's possible to move Python or C language mm -hmm. plus uh, C sharp on the UAVs. And the MATLAB, I think it's just instrument for the uh, um, that is complex because it's very convenient. Okay, so super okay, so now I would like to ask all the reviewers if they satisfy for answer to, to, to your question, or maybe you have some additional question, or maybe additional comments. So if you have any, if you're not satisfied with any response, we would like to hear your opinion, or maybe you have some additional questions. So, Professor Kachimoto Sensei, are you satisfied from responses to your question? Yes, I am quite satisfied. Thank you. And, Professor Contact, are you satisfied for responses to your to your questions? Yes, I do. Okay, so so our scouted colleagues also I understand 
satisfy for the concepts of professional finance? Yes, I think presentation and yeah. work is a good okay. okay, so now we have time. Uh, okay, maybe somebody outside of the viewer would like to ask some questions or they have some comments. So if any of you would like to, to, to give the question to, uh, to our candidate, or, or do you have any comments, especially critical comments? Please, please, now is opportunity to ask, to give such comments or to give any question. Professor Martin, maybe you have some question. Yes, I, I, I have maybe one question. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, Risha, and uh, for the uh, answer to the question and also to the members of the jury who did a lot of work and we really appreciate this. My question has to do with the, the global, uh, you did a lot of work. I agree with some of the uh, you know, comments here. And what would you say is the most important contribution of your work, Risha? Uh, I think uh, I have two most important contribution. So from the scientific part, I found the work uh, which was uh, performed for the automotive engine because it was made from uh, theoretical ideas uh, to creation of real auto model based on calculations using dynamics calculations and kinematics. Uh, However, I think that the most important maybe for future and uh, maybe future applications, it is the virtual reality based calculation system with using variable interface. Because I think it's very important for uh, directly aerial manipulation, but I think it's possible to use in another robotics. Okay. Thank you very much. And and what do you see as a well, you know, in, in a research work like this, there are some, you know, the expression low hanging fruits, things that you can pick up easily after you've done the work you see what i mean what do you think would be the next the the, the low hanging fruit or the thing that you would uh, provide the greatest benefits medium term short medium term what do you think could you clarify a little bit so i uh, need uh, uh, you want to know about how to i uh, change my reverse work or it means no i'm i'm asking about what if okay going forward now where do you think you would benefit most from next steps uh i see two ways but i prefer to develop the hybrid robot which will be able to walk uh, land fight and uh, manipulate with objects because uh, i think this system should be interesting and uh, by using this system we can Apply a lot of algorithms, including machine learning and all this. Okay, thank you very much, Visha. Thank you. And thank you very much. Thank, and all you. Thank, thank you. you. So, thank you very much. Okay, so now I would like to ask the Professor Kukuriko to, to give some comments and uh, experience to work together with uh, Mr. Yak. <laughs> Uh, thank you, dear committee members. First of all, I really appreciate uh, all of your participation because all of you are great experts in your field. Andrew Kipotsky in the Terminator Network, he did many works in also humanoid robotics. Professor Kajimoto, he is one of the best experts in haptics technologies and electric tactile simulation. Professor Konstantin Kondak, he is one of the key members of Iron Arms, a big European project in area manipulation, and he gave a lot of good feedback for today. Also, Andrei Solov, expert in IT, and Professor Gonzalo Ferrer in autonomous robot. Um, uh, thank you for your great uh, contribution to the work of uh, Risha, and he really improved the season during the last half a year. Uh, as my personal experience of work with Grigori, I would say that I met with him six years ago when he started to be a master student at Skoltech, and from that time he uh, learn about aerial manipulation 
right, deeper and deeper. So he really became a good expert in robotics. And as is today, uh, several experts mentioned that he can do a different types of uh, technologies in uh, different tools like MATLAB, uh, C++ programming. He also, he also, I would like to appreciate his prototype because he manufactured this arm. He assembled this arm by, by himself. He found the many difficulties, challenges, because when you're doing hardware design, you always face with some uh, challenges you have to overcome. And then after several trials, he assembled this robotic arm and he started to work. And we really started to impress to see the experimental results. So the second part is a main contribution is from my point of view, first of all, is a very, very well written series. It's like a tutorial, can be tutorial for the future researchers who would like to make the air manipulation or locomotion platform easy to read. So the uh, presentation level was much improved comparing with the first time. English quality also very high. And uh, from the personal point of view, I would say that the Gregorian from the last four years of PhD thesis, he did a very diligent work. Uh, he's very hardworking guys and very motivated. So he started from his own and it was very big challenge to do all of this work. Uh, I know this from my personal experience, uh, right? right? So you have to spend years to make the hardware design. And then after you do the hardware design, you have to spend a lot of to improvement of this design, then start experiment part. And then on the last part of his PhD thesis, he got some contribution from master and PhD student. And he organized a very good team of a very friendly team, very uh, um, good progressing. And for example, with Darius and Tato, they developed the virtual reality simulation system for aerial manipulation which is actually the world's first one in this area. And currently many researchers are looking forward in this, to step in this direction. And also I very highly contribute, um, I would like to appreciate this contribution from theoretical point of view because Gregory spent months for making this uh, dynamic model because there was a comment from one of the reviewers to make a very detailed dynamic model of locomotion of the undercated system, which intended, which is never was intended for the locomotion. Yes, it was intended for the bending of the leg to the adapt to the surface. So it, it couldn't uh, run uh, at all. So therefore, Gregory did a very good Lagrangian formulation, established a wonderful dynamic model, and uh, step by step, he faced many challenges. I know this, and finally, he when he got this. Uh, he, he got this result because every, uh, everything is done, I'm very happy. And uh, finally, he uh, passed the two good journals. The one is the RAL, it's two one ranking, and the second recently was accepted to GMAS, a journal of materialization systems uh, for aerial application. And it's really approved the high quality of the technology he did during this research, not mentioning about a good quality a conference where he personally came before the pandemic and he could make, make the presentation in Brazil. And also he did also the one parting together with one of the PhD students. So I really very appreciate uh, the work of Grigori. He did a uh, brilliant work for the last uh, four years and I wish him all the best for the future career. And I'm sure that now he is a very a strong expert in the field of robotics and uh, will be uh, uh, you is ready for the future change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dimitri. Okay, so now we will have a closed session. So we will ask um, Grigori and also Professor Petrov to, to lead to, I, I think that this could be here, yes? Or yes. Also yes, okay, yes. So, let, let me do. So, so now we have we will have a closed session. Okay. First, and first of all, let's yes, let's. Uh, let's so, so the professor is able to can be with us. No, yes. no, no. Let's see. So I I would like to announce the result. So it's my great pleasure to uh, to announce that you successfully defended your PhD thesis. All five reviewers expressed positive opinion and they conclude that you pass your defense as it is without any uh, correction. So 
Grigori, we would like to congratulate you for your hard work and for your achievements. So, and well, congratulations. <laughs> so now we come to the ceremony that uh, Professor Sikiriko uh, with you. Thank you all for all participants. It's really good day and uh, I am really happy. Thank you all. Congratulations and well-deserved, Grigori. Yes, congratulations, Grisha. Congratulations. Grigori, congratulations also from my side. I have to disappoint you that now your life is going to be more and more complicated now, yeah? After defense, yeah? 